Making money in RuneScape isn't particularly hard, but most of the best money makers require max stats or a high level account. But if you think about it, probably the majority of players are somewhere in the old school RuneScape mid game. So today we're going to be covering some of my favorite mid game money makers that can actually earn you a pretty decent GB per hour, even if you don't have a high level account. Now, one of my favorite ones I've been doing recently is something that has very low requirements, and that is participating in the Shades of Morton minigame. Particularly, you're going to be sanctifying olive oil. Now, essentially, the idea behind this moneymaker is you turn olive oil into sacred oil, olive oil being worth 50 GP and sacred oil being worth 3.5k. To do this, you have to participate in a minigame, and it's really easy. The only hard requirements are you have to complete Shades of Morton to get access to it, and you need a minimum of 20 crafting. Now for an inventory, you want mostly an entire inventory of olive oil, but you also need a tinderbox, a flame tar hammer, and a flame tar bag, which is acquired in the Shades Catacomb. In the flame tar bag, you're gonna put in some timber beams, limestone brick, and swamp paste, and it'll hold all of that together. All those things together will help speed up this method. Also, I would highly recommend bringing a flame tar bracelet, also speeds things up. Once you have all these items though, the method is dead simple. First, you wanna to hop to world 377, which is the Shades of Morton world. From there, you're just gonna run in, left click on a wall and start repairing it. As you repair the temple, your sanctity percent will go up. And you're just gonna keep doing that until you get to around 90% sanctity. Afterwards, you're just gonna left click your olive oil onto the fire to sanctify it and turn it into sacred oil. Very simple. Once you've done your full inventory, you're gonna teleport back to a bank and repeat. Now an easy way to get back to the Shades of Morton minigame is to use a Barrows teleport tablet. Those are accessible to anyone. Or you can use the Shades of Morton teleport or even the Mauritania Legs 3 if you have those unlocked. Also a good teleport. Overall though this method is really good. You'll normally be able to earn yourself at least 800k per hour. But right now it's more like 1.3 or 1.4 mil per hour in profit. Which is incredibly good for a mid-level or even really low-level method. Now next up here I wanted to actually throw in a boss. Now bossing on a mid-level account can be very difficult and even more difficult to make a decent profit per hour, but killing Dagonoth Rex in Dagonoth Rex only is a pretty accessible way for a mid-level account to make a decent amount of money while killing a boss. Now Dagonoth Rex is one of the three Dagonoth Kings located in the Waterbirth Dungeon. Probably the most difficult part of this entire method is getting there and setting things up. But once you're in the right position, killing Rex is dead simple. Now the only requirements you really need for this method is 50 magic to be able to use Iben's Staff and Iben's Blast. Minimum of 40 defense, although something higher would be better will let you stay here longer. And also 43 prayer is highly recommended. Now to access Waterbirth Island, you need to complete Fremenic Trials as well. Now for your equipment, you're just simply gonna bring your Iben's Staff and that's gonna be really your only piece of mage equipment. The rest, you're really just gonna be wearing the tankiest armor you can find. Ideally one that is prioritizing range defense. So minimum probably rune armor, but if you can have access to barrows, that would be better as well. A granite shield is really nice. Really just as tanky as you can get. In your inventory, you need to bring, just to access the dungeon, a pet rock and a rune throne axe. And the rest of your inventory really just needs to be some super anti-poisons, some prayer potions, and a lot of food. Now accessing the Dagonoth Kings does take a while. It's quite a long dungeon, requires you to drop your pet rock in the ground, use the Rune Throne Axe's special attack to access the triple doors, and then run through a combination of Wallawaskis, Giant Rock Crabs, and Dagonoths till you finally can access the ladder that leads to the Dagonoth Kings. Now you might be wondering, how do you kill just Dagonoth Rex if there's three Dagonoths roaming around? Well, the Wander range of the three Dagonoths doesn't cover the entire room, and once you get into the right position, you can easily hug the wall and attack Rex as it spawns without aggroing Prime or Supreme. Now, the way I do this on the mid-level account is I run over to the ladder, peek down to see if anyone's there. If it's empty, I go down the ladder with Protect Magic on. Likely, there will be a Dagonoth right there that will attack you. If that's the case, you go back up, hop worlds, or you can just wait a little while in the same world and then go back down. Eventually, they will be a bit further away from the entrance and you can skirt around the edge and then get into position. Once you've hugged the wall and gone around, you're pretty much home free. You just have to attack Rex and you can even safe spot him on some of these janky corners quite easily. Once you've set this up, it's very low intensity. Now the money per hour you can make killing Dagonoth Rex only is about one mil per hour, which is mainly made up of the Berserker Ring. Considering you only need Ivan's Blast to do this and some tank armor, it's a pretty good method accessible to mid-levels 
and I recommend trying it out if you want to get some early game bossing in. Now historically one skill that has almost never been profitable is woodcutting, but that has changed thanks to forestry. Now forestry is not a elite level moneymaker by any means, but, but considering it offers some of the best woodcutting experience in the game while also being the most profitable way to train the skill, I think it's a pretty good option for those looking to make money in the mid game. Forestry has no hard and fast requirement, you can start doing it pretty much right from level 1 woodcutting. All you have to do is grab yourself a forester's kit, an axe, and you're good to go. Now the way you make money with forestry is by acquiring anima bark and using the anima bark to purchase tradable items such as the log brace, the felling axe handle, or any of the many consumable items. Now each anima bark that you acquire is worth roughly 200 GP and you can get it very quickly. Now obviously this isn't going to be a full forestry guide, there's a lot to it, tons of different events to cover, but overall all of them are pretty self-explanatory. But some of the best locations to do it in are Drainer Village at the Willows, or Camelot in Sears Village is another really good location with tons of different trees and people training forestry. One thing I would recommend doing is hopping to a forestry world, as it's more fun and efficient to chop with other people. The money per hour here really varies based on the value of the forestry rewards. Right now it's somewhere around 500k to a mil per hour depending on how efficient you are if you are camping one location or if you're running around Gilinor trying to find all of the forestry events. Personally I never really bothered with that and I would just stick in one location, way more relaxed, and the anima bark still stacks up pretty quickly. Great way to train your woodcutting and make some money at the same time. Okay, one of my favorite new methods that is actually really good is opening the grubby chest in Kurend. This method only has one real requirement, 57 thieving, although you also need a bit of money to get started, normally somewhere between 5 and 10 mil. The grubby chest is a really underrated moneymaker because mostly it's viewed as kind of like a supply, resupply chest for stuff like Seracnus, but if you completely ignore most of the actual food and potion drops, the resources you get from it are actually incredibly good and the method's really simple as well. So I'm running to the grubby chest with a half inventory of grubby keys, which seems like a lot considering you get a ton of items from these things, but the method we're going to be doing is a bit of a brute force method where we're going to leave quite a few items on the ground. It seems a bit counterintuitive, but it's actually better to leave a bit of profit on the ground and open more keys per hour than it is to only bring like 5 keys at a time. So the grubby chest is located deep in the Forthos dungeon. The easiest way I find to get here consistently is just using a skills necklace, it has no requirements, you can teleport to the woodcutting guild and then run into the dungeon. All you have to do is lockpick this door, run in, and start opening the chest. Now right away you're going to notice a lot of items are going to end up on the ground, and what you're going to do is make sure you drop a few items every time you open a key, primarily the food drops and some of the potions. Those are valuable-ish, but not really worth picking up. See every time I'm just dropping a few items, make sure we get the main valuable resource drop in our inventory. And we're just going to repeat that over and over and over again. If you price check this full inventory, it says it's worth 636k and the keys are worth 430. So obviously it's a bit RNG dependent on how much money you make per run. But generally, if you open a lot of keys per hour, you're going to make somewhere between 1 and 2 mil per hour. A great mid-level money maker that has very low requirements. Really the main drawback is you need a bit of money to get started. But you can build your bank up pretty quickly with this, so I'd highly recommend it. Now another moneymaker that can be quite profitable for mid-levels is actually hunting implings in Puro Puro. Impling jars are opened often to gain clue scrolls and the value of these can range from a couple thousand all the way up to a half mil for a dragon impling jar. So obviously it's pretty lucrative to track these down, but the amount of money you can make per hour with this is a bit inconsistent. Now the requirements for this method range a bit based on what implants you want to catch. I would recommend at least a minimum of 50 to be able to hunt eclectic implants, but if you want access to all of them you'll need 83. Now some supplementary requirements that can be nice is 50 magic just to be able to use this snare spell. This is pretty handy for hunting down the implants because otherwise you are going to be running around pushing through wheat and it's just going to be a bad time so I would recommend at least 50 magic as well. Now for your inventory you're going to want a butterfly net, ideally the magic butterfly net. To acquire this all you have to do is trade in 3 gourmet implant jars, 2 earth implant jars and 1 essence jar to the guy in the middle. I highly recommend doing that first. Now there's two strategies here, either you hop worlds a lot trying to track down dragon implants, or you stick in one world 
and spam catch something like Eclectics or Nature in Plane Jars. Really the strategy is going to come down mainly to what your hunter level is. If you have access to all the implanes, hopping between worlds semi-often is probably worth it to see if you can get lucky and snag a dragon implane, which right now are worth 475k. Otherwise trying to track down ninja implanes which are 50k, magpies are 25k, those are also quite good to catch as well. Really the GP per hour is going to vary on a lot of factors, but you can usually make between 500k and a mil per hour depending on your luck, hunter level, and focus, which is pretty good for a method that is accessible in the mid levels and really isn't that hard. The main drawbacks, dragon implanes are a bit of a high requirement and it can get very competitive here with bots. Now next up here we have the sinister chest. This is another favorite method of mine because it has pretty low requirements but the GP per hour, very consistent and quite high for a mid level money maker. Opening the Sinister Chest requires 49 agility and access to the Yanil Agility Dungeon. Besides that though, you're going to need some starter cash as well, up to 10 mil to do this for an hour. Now this method is really easy, you just need to bring something to chop a web, a super anti-poison, and a full inventory of Sinister Keys. Now each open of the Sinister Chest gives you the exact same items every time, so it's pretty easy to determine if this chest is profitable open or not. Normally you can make between 1 and 1.5 mil per hour opening it, and it's very simple. I'd usually recommend putting your house to Yanil if you can, that way you can just use a house teleport to get back and bank. Otherwise you can use the watchtower teleport if you have access to that. Either of them work pretty well. From the bank you're going to take your full inventory, you're going to run up through the web into the dungeon, south across the pipe, and into this small room here. From here you're just going to drop a couple keys on the ground and start opening them up. It's a really slow animation so it's going to take a while, but each time you open it, solid profit. Usually you can earn somewhere between 1 and 1.5 mil an hour doing this, which is really quite good. The only drawbacks, no experience, and also buying the Sinister Keys can take a while. They're not a super well traded item, but overall I'd recommend giving this method a try as it's quite profitable. Now probably one of the most profitable mid game money makers has got to be Revenants. Now, now there's a few caveats to this and I'm sure you can guess what they are. For one, it's probably in the busiest hotspot in the wilderness, which means tons of PKers, also incredibly packed with bots and just other players killing Revenants. With that said, the potential money you can make at Revenants is pretty much higher than any other mid-level money maker and you are able to kill them with minimal risk and reasonably high DPS. Now the requirements to kill Revenants aren't super high, realistically you're going to want to have 70 ranged and 40 defense to be able to wear black dehyde just to have some decent ranged damage output. Beyond that you're going to want a bit of money, a couple mil to get started just to count for some deaths, but really not actually that high a requirement. Now a pretty popular setup that a lot of players and bots will take is you bring an amulet of avarice which will skull you but you bring pretty much no other items worth anything beyond the amulet and protect from item. The Amulet of Avarice skulls you but it increases your DPS and it makes all the drops in the Revenant Cave noted. So as long as you have Protect from item up when you die, you're only risking about 150 to 200k, which is really almost nothing. You could die 5 times in an hour and still come out ahead. You should try not to die that many times though. Now for the rest of the setup, we're just bringing a Magic Shortbow with Rune Arrows, Black Dehyde, a Bracelet of Ethereum, and some Snakeskin. Our inventory is set up with some brews, some blighted super restores, some blighted manta rays, and a one click teleport. Out of there, I'm using a seed pod, but you can also use a ring of wealth, a glory, something like that. Now any of the revenants in here are going to be pretty good money. The revenant orc is by far the most popular one. You can see just how many people are hopping between different worlds here, but you still kill them really quickly with a magic short bow and you don't take very much damage at all. Now revenants do drop rare items, but for the most part most of the money is just going to come from these consistent alkable drops and they add up really quickly. Now because you can get back here so quickly with a burning amulet or a revenant teleport, usually recommended not to go for more than like half an hour at a time before banking, it's just so quick to get back there's really no point to stack up too much loot. Now even with a somewhat lower DPS build like a magic short bow, you can still earn yourself well over 2 mil an hour with a few deaths here and there which is incredibly good for a mid-level account and sure maybe you don't want to do this to rebuild your entire account but it's still one of the most profitable options in the mid game. Now finally here it's kind of hard to talk about mid game money makers without talking about herb runs. Herb runs are just one of the best options to make money, very consistent and most people have access to it pretty early on in an account. 
The reason herb runs continue to be so profitable is really the time-gated nature of them. Herbs are bottlenecked by in-game time it takes to actually grow plants, and they're in high demand. To do an effective herb run, you really only need 32 farming. There is, of course, a ton of other things that can help you along the way. Teleports, magic secateurs, and those are all great, but really to get just the main bang for your bucket of herb runs, you just need ultra compost and some Renar seeds. Pretty dang easy. Most players, when you start off an account, will pretty quickly have access to five herb patches. The one in Falador, the one in Catherby, the one in Mauritania, the patch in Ardoin, and the patch in Hosidius. Doing a five patch run with Renar weeds, which you unlock at 32, on average will get you about 130k profit per run, and it'll only take you about five minutes. Do that a couple times a day and you are making millions per week. And the effective profit per hour is normally somewhere between 2.5 mil and 3 mil per hour depending on the herb and the profitability. Generally, I just recommend checking out the wiki farm run calculator just to see what is the most profitable herb to plant for the month because it changes a lot. Right now, Avantos are the most profitable, but any of the top five are pretty close. So those are my eight favorite mid-game moneymakers that I've done quite a bit recently. I highly recommend giving them a try. Thanks for watching as always, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.